now on News Talk 105.9 WMAL. O'Connor and Company. Well, happy Tuesday to all of you, or Monday part two, as I've been calling it. I'm Andrew Langer, uh, here in for Larry O'Connor. Joining me, as she does, is my old longtime colleague. I, I try not to say old, Julie, but again, it gets to be 8.30, and, and, I'm, and, I'm, and your boy is tired, as, uh, as uh, Larry King used up, to say. You've been mixing up my name all morning, but now it's yeah. easy because there, of our next guest. Yeah, that's that's, that's exactly, no, that's going to confuse the heck out of me. Joining us right now... Uh, is uh, Julie Kelly. She is the author of January 6th, How the Democrats Used the Capitol Protest to Launch a War on Terror Against the Political Right. Uh, she is also uh, the the founder and host of her own Substack, Declassified with Julie Kelly. And Julie, so we got this new schedule of trials out there. We got uh, Judge uh, Tanya Chutkin uh, uh, said basically Donald Trump's got to lump it or leave it in terms of the schedule. He's just got to figure out what to do. You know, we, I knew, we know he's running for president, but uh, but he's just got to figure out how to make how to make these trials fit in his schedule. What are your thoughts on all of this? Hey, Andrew. Well, I will call Julie Gunlock my old friend because <laughs> we have been friends for years, even though I haven't seen her and I miss her terribly. Oh, but I miss you too. Um, yes. Yeah, so uh, interestingly enough, it wasn't just the trial date that she set down yesterday. I actually got a transcript of the hearing last night and I was posting it on Twitter. Her remarks are so out of bounds. And as I write about in my real clear piece, her comments in court over the past two years really disqualify her from handling this case against Donald Trump. But the remarks she made yesterday were even more inflammatory. She compared January 6th to the Boston Marathon bombing in 9-11. There you go. That, right, that her fast-track trial, which will now be seven months between indictment and trial, which is crazy. The DOJ couldn't even come up with an example of a five-month period between indictment and trial. So she thought she was doing Donald Trump a big favor by adding two more months. But in the process, as she continued to confront John Loro, Trump's attorney, about why there was no way this would be going to trial in 2026. She then bragged about how, in comparing this to 9 11, the Zacharias Musawi uh, case, sure. and the Boston bomber saying that, well, that was two years between the date of the incident and when that uh, the Sarnev brother went to trial. Well, what she forgot to say yes. is that the brother was arrested within a week right. of killing three people, including an eight-year-old boy, and injuring hundreds of others. This is who Judge Tanya Chutkin is. And you know what's amazing, Julian Andrew? I've been reading the reports about this hearing. Not a single reporter has called her out or said that was out yes. of bounds for comparing Donald Trump to Zacharias Musawi and the Zarnev brother who terrorize, legitimately terrorize this country, right. the city of Boston. Right. And, and you know, it's, she is. It, it's interesting to me because, you know, one of the great problems, you know, I, I think that it is we are all sort of expecting that that at least in one of these things, and I would say, you know, that, that in many of them, Donald Trump is going to Donald Trump is going to get convicted, given the venues and how the judges and mm. and and. And uh, guys, I'm just I'm just sort of no, saying I, no, how, I how it's all biased, but it's going to these things are going to get overturned on appeal and it's going to get overturned on appeal because of comments like Judge Chutkin's comments yesterday in all of this. And the problem, of course, is, right, people remember Bob McDonald, governor of Virginia, getting arrested and getting convicted. People forget that the Supreme Court overturned that right. conviction and incidentally created a whole new standards in terms of the issue of quid pro quo. But but the but the point in the end is that that you know these these are clearly going to be grounds for appeal, and yet it doesn't matter because in the end, the left wants their scalp, and they're going to get their scalp, and 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 uh, judges like Judge Chutkin can operate with impunity. Well, I still suspect this May fourth uh, trial date is not good. Excuse me, March fourth trial date. May is in the classified documents case. Yeah. So think about this. Judge and Judge Chutkin said she called the judge in the Manhattan case to say that she was going to step on their existing trial date so she can rush this to court in Washington, D.C., a city of almost 100 percent Democrats. DOJ has a near perfect conviction record in January 6th trials. Almost every defendant 
every count returning this jury, these juries returning all guilty verdicts, even on insane charges like seditious conspiracy. Right. So she can try to fast track it, but I don't think that Jack Smith, and of course the McDonald case you just referred to being overturned. Oh, that's right. That was Jack Smith. Right. That was his case. So he's a losing prosecutor, which shows um, his arguments are garbage, but it doesn't matter, especially in Washington, D.C. I still think Jack Smith is going to bring additional charges against Mm -hmm. Donald Trump, possibly something like seditious conspiracy. And, of course, there are still six co-conspirators listed in his four-count indictment, including people like Rudy Giuliani and Sidney Powell, Jeffrey Clark, John Eastman. Jack Smith doesn't want to be um, upstaged by Fannie Willis, who, of course, has charged all of these people, including Trump. I don't think he's going to let her Mm. steal the spotlight from him. So this is all performative. It's all optics. But to your point, Andrew, the things that Tanya Chutkin has said in her courtroom now for two years, in addition to what she said yesterday, comparing this to 9-11 and the Boston Marathon bombing, imagine being a family member. And look, we've seen this come out of the Biden DOJ. We've heard Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and Merrick Garland compare this to 9-11. Think of how insulting it is to the survivors of those who were killed in those terrorist attacks. These people don't care. They are vicious. They are vile. They are vengeful. And they don't care who it hurts or whose memory they they demean or besmirch by comparing a four-hour disturbance at the Capitol um, to a terrorist attack that killed 3,000 people and, of course, three in in Boston. Truly. Really shameful, disgusting behavior. Julie, we're running up a break, uh, against a break, but I just want to encourage everyone to go to your Substack. Quickly tell us where people can find that. Sure. Thanks, Jules. So I'm on Twitter a lot posting things, Julie underscore Kelly, too. And then my Substack is declassified with Julie Kelly. And that's just um I think you go right to Substack. Listen, I want everyone to know Julie Kelly's been right on almost every single thing. and She takes a lot of hell for it so uh so go visit her sub stack she's an absolute hero um a hero to a lot of folks so thank you julie so much thank you julie take care thanks, thanks. andrew take we, care we got more coming up it's eight forty four on wmal